is there anyone out there? Anyone who's ever peered into the deepest parts of the night sky has likely asked themselves this question at least once in their life. Considering the sheer size of the universe, it's easy to believe that there must be other life out there somewhere. For some time, people thought alien life not only exists, but it also has been visiting the Earth for a long time, and it seems the number of people who believe aliens have visited the planet has been gradually rising. For instance, in the US, the number of people who believed unidentified flying object sightings are evidence of alien life has increased from 20% in 1996 to 34% in 2022. Similarly, a YouGov poll conducted in March 2025 found that 32% of British people believed intelligent life had visited the planet already. The scientific and academic world has rarely taken the subject seriously, based on the fact that we have zero evidence that aliens exist anywhere in the universe, let alone that they have been visiting us. Of course, some scientists are looking for signs of extraterrestrial life, but they are doing so by searching for signals from distant planets. Other scholars have held philosophical discussions about how likely aliens are to exist at all, while some more policy-minded individuals have proposed protocols for when, if, a first contact situation occurs. In addition, biologists have considered how evolution for an alien species may play out on planets that have different conditions to ours. Would these organisms evolve in similar ways to us, or would they appear considerably different? However, this is not satisfying to the increasing number of people who regard the scientific disinterest in alien contact as either a sign of academic arrogance, or worse, a deliberate effort to cover something up. Alongside the increase in people believing UFOs and UAPs are signs of alien visits, is it conspiratorial belief that corrupt institutions are trying to conceal the truth? Pressure for transparency around UAP sightings has even led to politicians to respond to public demand, which was evident in the Pentagon's recent disclosures. This whole process received interest from both sides of the American political divide. There was a big rise of belief in UFOs in the 1950s, during the Cold War, and when there was a serious threat of nuclear war in the early 1960s. Aliens could be seen as saviours, or as a greater external threat. Tony Milligan, research fellow at the Philosophy of Ethics at King's College London noted, It distorts the political process when policy draws upon conspiracy theories about government cover-ups and about scientists secretly cooperating with conspiracies. The current, heavily politicised variant of UFOlogy is also looking for conspirators from the science community and within government, people who have helped to conceal the truth. UFOlogy may also lead to misunderstanding of our past, a problem that is subtly racist at its core. Since the 1960s and 70s, UFOologists, as well as some other believers in long-lost super-advanced civilizations, have mined the traditions and stories of various cultures to create fictional histories they would rather subscribe to. In many cases, these alternative accounts explain how typically ancient cultures such as the Egyptians or the people of South America could create complex civilizations and architectural and technological advancements at a time when Europeans were still illiterate. To put it plainly, for advocates of ancient alien visitors, it is far more palatable to imagine high-tech extraterrestrials than to concede that ancient non-European people could be sophisticated. And, as with today, there were also official investigations into UFO claims that stirred public attention. The first of note was Project Sign, conducted between 1948 and 1949, which looked into a wave of unexplained aerial sightings in the immediate post-war period. The longest-running investigation, which collected and analysed thousands of sighting reports, was Project Blue Book, which operated between 1952 and 1969. This project attempted to apply greater scientific rigour to the subject. Importantly, as most UFO cases then and today rely almost exclusively on eyewitness statements and anecdotes, investigators tried to transform narratives into useful data. Despite examining thousands of cases, the reports they produced ultimately concluded that there was no evidence of aliens at all. But while places like France and Sweden carried out their investigations and worked quite collaboratively with UFOologists, places like the US, the UK and the Soviet Union kept their work behind closed doors. This secrecy, as well as the decision to exclude UFO enthusiasts from the dialogue, has gone a long way to generate the levels of distrust evident today. The same is true for the academic world's disinterest in the subject, which has consistently regarded the topic as spurious or even as pathological science, which is an area of research that misleads people into believing false results due to subjective influences or wishful thinking. Hoaxing, fakes and rumour-mongering have always been practised too, and it's the same way today. But of course, the ability of deep fakes is much better now than it used to be, and the spread of information and misinformation is much easier in many ways. 
Thank you for watching IFL Science. Please subscribe for more videos.